Hey everyone, so what I'm going to be doing today is cutting down a few of my sunflowers and I'm going to save and dry the stalks so that I can use them in the garden next year as supports. So to build some trellises or maybe taller supports for my dahlias. So what I realized this year is that the supports that I have, other than the tomato cages, aren't really tall enough for what I need, especially on my dahlias, which have started to kind of fall over because the supports I think were maybe I don't know, two feet tall, uh, whereas this sunflower, at least right now, is like four feet tall. I have two others that are seven feet tall. I don't know if I'm going to cut both of those down today, um, but we'll see. Now, the reason I'm doing this right now, instead of waiting a little bit, is because we are going to be gone starting this weekend. We're going to be gone for about five and a half days. Um, while most of my garden is set up on drip, there is still a pretty good amount of plants that aren't. I'm going to try to remedy that next year. Um, but the person that we have coming over who's going to make sure our cats stay alive is also going to be watering the garden. And I want to make sure that that process is as easy as possible for them. So any plants that are kind of on their way out or I don't think will be around much longer into September, I am going to go ahead and cut them down and pull them. Again, just so it's much easier for the person who is watering the garden. They don't have as many plants to water if I don't plan on really having them around much longer after I get back. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sunflower down. Um, I will then kind of show you how I'm going to get it ready to dry, talk a little bit about how I'm going to dry it and then where I'm gonna store it because again, I'm not really going to use these until next year. Uh, so let's go ahead and chop the sunflower down. sunflower has been cut down obviously now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the leaves but I'm gonna leave maybe about an inch of the stem and the reason I'm doing this is so you know most of the time when I'm using supports I'm also using twine and by having some of these stems sticking out that's gonna give me something to tie the twine to um, something I'm having an issue with right now is if I have a support that's just like one long pole and I want to tie twine here, I have to tape the twine or else the twine's going to fall down the plant. But by having these stems sticking out, that's a good place that will hold the twine so it stays in place and doesn't slip all the way down. So I'm just going to snip. Now this leaf is completely dead, so I'm just going to cut that off. I feel bad seeing all these little blooms. Try not to feel so bad about it, but I still do and just cutting all of these off. Okay, now this one. This one's making me extra sad, but I'll cut this, I'll stick it in a little bud vase, and I'll see if anything happens. makes it a little bit easier to handle cutting those down. So I have the one flower that was already bloomed and then the one that was just close to opening up in this bud base. I'll put them on my desk. I won't feel as bad about cutting the sunflower itself down. So I'm going to set that here. Now one thing about me is I'm very bad at estimating anything like distance, height, time, number of M&Ms in the jar that you used to play at school. Um, this is definitely not four feet tall. I would say this is maybe two and a half feet tall. So this I'm gonna leave intact as is so that it will be one long support. Whereas I think the ones up front where again, the sunflowers are like six to seven feet, those I'll chop down and then cut them in half. Um, but again, I don't know if I'm going to pull those down today, maybe just one of them. So they're not set up to drip, which is why I think I wanna get them removed before we head out of town. The pots are smaller, so sometimes they even have to be watered twice a day to keep them happy, and the person that is coming isn't going to be coming twice a day. I could set them up to drip, but I don't know if it's worth it when the flowers themselves are already starting to fade. Um, but the reason I can't bring myself to maybe remove them, or we'll see, is that the morning glory I have in my flower cart has been growing up them, and I saw a picture when I started doing that of 
blooming morning glory on a sunflower. And even though the sunflower blooms are fading, the morning glory still is not bloomed. So I'm like, I really just want to see a morning glory flower on a sunflower at the same time, but I don't know if that's going to happen for me. So anyway, um, let me show you how I'm going to clean up the rest of the stuff. Basically all the leaves I'm going to throw into the composter and then depending on how root bound this is, I will show you if I am going to keep some of the soil or if it's actually it probably looks like there's some soil I can add to it or if I'm going to kind of chop up the roots or we'll just kind of see what I want to do. But let's go ahead and I'll get these in the compost first. So I dumped the sunflower container basically upside down, kind of like making a sandcastle, and it actually doesn't seem as terribly root bound as I expected it to be. So what I think we're going to do is just use my hands and try to break up the roots. This is basically my tub of old soil that I'm going to save and then mix with fresh soil and compost next year for the garden. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to just break up the roots and then over the winter the roots should break down into the soil here. So here is what's kind of left of the original root ball. I'd say I got two thirds of the soil out of the container that I can use. And then this is the section that really is too root bound to be useful. So this is what I will just throw away. Now, I think I mentioned this, I can't remember what video, but as a reminder, if you are in Chicago and you have garden waste, you don't have to like throw it away in the garbage, but if you put it all into a garbage bag and then you can request online at 311 on the app, online or call if you want to and they will come and pick up your garden waste to compost it that works for yard waste as well so anything like this that kind of doesn't really work to go in my composter isn't really something i can use again next year that i just put in a bag and then call 311 no i don't call i message through the app <laughs> we are back in the front garden and i want to show you something i did with these sunflowers which i just planted the pea seeds a few days ago so basically all of the petals for the most part had fallen off so i chopped off the heads of the sunflowers and then there were nine total so I just gathered three together and tied them with twine and i'm actually wondering if some of these there's little tiny buds here um, so even though these were single stem there are still like tiny little buds where some of the leaves were i'm wondering if they'll get like little tiny flowers i think that would be pretty so now they look more like traditional supports or trellises than just random sunflowers. Here's what we are looking like with the two giant sunflowers. So if I come in, well first off, this is the one I think I'm going to pull today. This is the one I think I'm going to leave a little bit longer, I think. We'll see. But if I come in close, I don't think I've removed any of the sunflower heads yet. So this one was the first one that came up. And then we have the other ones that are branching out. And I mean, this one is still opening up, but again, I would leave these up a little bit longer if we weren't heading out of town. And I just, I don't want to make the person, again, water extra containers that I don't think are going to look very good in like a week or so. So we'll see. Uh, this one over here, if you can see right here is the morning glory well some of the morning glory that's been trailing up the sunflowers that's also worked really well i do find if i move this that it does provide a lot of really good support so that worked out well but i just i really want to see the morning glory blooming on the sunflower stem but i don't know one if this is going to bloom and two if it's going to bloom anytime soon when there's actually still sunflowers on the stalk now I have to decide if I want to remove this sunflower in the safest way or in the most exciting way, which the most exciting way I think would just be to do a chop at the bottom and see which way it falls. And since I don't think there's a ton of damage it could actually cause, I think that's what I'm going to do. But first I need to remove the supports or else it's 
not going to tip over. So I have some twine right here, which is what I initially started with. So I'll give that a snip. So then I have to go and remove the morning glory that's been supporting it as well. So I'm just going to find wherever it's connected. I think that one's safe. And let's do some snipping. And I think I'm gonna need two hands for that. Well, I think it was worth it to go the more dramatic route because that was a little bit fun, which kind of helps to counterbalance the sadness of actually cutting it down. Now, I can't believe how much support the Morning Glory was actually giving to the sunflower. I knew there was a little bit, but when I cut, there was only one piece of twine. Everything else was being held up completely by the Morning Glory. So if I grow sunflowers again, I will try to grow Morning Glory up something next to them. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one that I did to the other one, just going up and snipping off the leaves, but leaving about an inch of the stem. And then this one actually has some larger flowers. So I'm gonna see if there's any seeds that I can either save for myself on it or hang somewhere for the birds. So here is what we are left with. This is all of the leaves. And then I did remove the sunflower heads. I got some seeds out, but a lot of the seeds had already been eaten, which is fine by me. So this is going to go into the compost as well. Then up here, I have some of the seeds in here that I will go through and save either for next year for myself or giving them to somebody because even if I grow sunflowers again next year, I don't have space for this money. Um, and then I just saved some of the sunflowers that still looked, I mean, that one looks a little rough. Um, this one I can put in a vase though for a little bit. And then this one as well, I'll keep in water just to see if it opens up a little bit more. And then we have the stalk itself, which after, you know, I cut, the flower off it's really just about at my height so about five foot four i was originally planning to cut this in half but i think i'm going to leave it intact for now just in case next year i have something where i need one this tall and if i don't then i can always cut it in half at that point now, as far as drying these, I actually saw two different recommendations that seem to contradict. Uh, one said to leave it outside in full sun um, for like 30 to 45 days. The other one said to store inside in a cool, dry place. So inside versus outside, cool versus direct sun. Um, what I think I'm gonna do, because I don't know exactly where I'm gonna store these yet inside, I think I'm just gonna leave them kind of up against the wall, um, the two that I have, so the shorter one and the taller one and leave them there for a little bit in the full sun to help dry out. And then I will find a place somewhere to store that over winter. That is one thing I feel with gardening is you just end up with a lot of random things inside your house that you probably normally wouldn't have inside your house. Like for example, I have a bucket full of dried hydrangea flowers. Now I'm gonna have some sunflower stalks just drying in the corner. And here are the two stakes. You can see the one much taller than the other. So that's gonna be everything for this video. Like I said, I'm gonna leave the other sunflower up for now, hoping that the morning glory bloom sometime soon over there. Um, I'll probably end up chopping it down either before or after a trip, I'm not sure. But one of the things I really love is figuring out how much stuff I can make from stuff in my garden and not having to buy it, if that makes sense. For example, like these steaks here, I'm using from sunflowers. Um, the steaks I used for my dahlias were like broken pieces of a greenhouse. I remember I was looking up um, a, a rack for the dried flowers uh, last year, I think it was, and they were selling something for $30, which was a stick with some twine. And I was like, you know what? I think I can actually make that on my own. So it's just fun when you can find like other purposes for the things that you have lying around or in your garden. Um, but that's gonna be everything for this video. I will let you know how the drying of these goes and then hopefully we will see them again in the garden next year. Bye.